Hey everybody, today I'm going to be showing you how to tell the difference between yellow and yellow. Now this has always bugged me for a long time. It's always bugged me that the way our brains and the cones and the cells in our eyes work is that we always see yellow whether or not we're seeing red and green light or actual yellow light. Let me explain what I mean. So you can see here that when you shine a red light and then shine a green light, you don't get a reddish green, but you just get yellow. So whenever you shine a red and green light together, our brain perceives a yellow light. And that's because our eyes have three different kinds of cones in them, or three different kinds of receptors to receive light. One of them is ones that can receive long wavelengths, one of them is ones that can receive medium wavelengths, and then one of them is ones that can receive short wavelengths. And so those correspond to what we sometimes call blue cones, green cones, and red cones. So for some reason, if we just shine a red light, then our brain only perceives red. And if we just shine a green light, then our brain only perceives green. But if we shine a red and a green light, then suddenly we perceive yellow light. And this perception of yellow would actually be the exact same perception of yellow had we just seen this specific frequency of yellow light shined at us. And the reason that happens is because our brain doesn't just take the input from these cones only. The output from these cone cells then go to another processing system. And this is called the opponent process system. And in this system, there's two different types of cells. And so what this first set of cells does is it takes the input from these cones and it adds the R and the G cones and subtracts the B cones. And in this case, the long wavelengths is the R, the medium wavelengths is the G, and the short wavelengths is the blue. And the way the final output of that color comes out in the perception in our brain is that if it's a positive number, then we perceive yellow. If it's around zero, then we just perceive white. If it's a negative number, then we perceive blue. And so if you get red and green light shined at you, then it adds the red and the green, and that's a positive number, and so you see yellow. If you get red and green and blue light shined at you, then the blue light negates the red and the green, and you see a white color. Or if you just get yellow, specifically yellow light shown at you, then you still are activating both the red and the green cones, or these M and L cones. You're activating both of them, as you can see here, and so you still get a positive number and you perceive yellow. Now there's also a secondary type of cell that takes the signal but uses a different equation, and it does R plus B minus G. And on that side, if you get a positive number, then you see a magenta color. If you get a zero-ish number, then you get around a white color. And if you get a negative number, then you get a green color. Now if you combine all of those inputs of those sliding scales together, then you get all of the different colors that humans can perceive. Now in a previous video, I mentioned that there's something called forbidden colors, which are the colors that are on the different ends of these sliding scales, like yellow and blue, or magenta and green. You can never see a mixture of those colors because they're at opposite ends of each other. So you'll never be able to see a yellowish blue or a reddish green. But what I want to talk about today is how you can actually tell the difference between yellow and yellow. So how can you actually tell the difference between yellow that is actually red and green light and yellow that is actually yellow light? Well, let me show you how to do it. Now in order to show you this, I need a source of light that only produces specifically yellow light. And for that I'm going to be using a low pressure sodium vapor lamp. And that produces light at 589 nanometers specifically. That means that it's not actually a mixture of red and green light, but it's specifically yellow light at 589 nanometers. So let me show you what that looks like versus a yellow LED light that has both green and red light. So you remember this paper that I was holding here, how it has the colors of the rainbow on it. Let me show you what it looks like when we just turn off the lights and only use the light source from the low pressure sodium vapor lamp. So let's turn off our backlight and then turn on our yellow light. Okay, three, two, one. So you'll notice some interesting things now. So the only color we can see is yellow because this is the only color being emitted. So basically it just becomes this shade of yellow and it can actually start to look black and white 
mainly because our brain likes to white balance everything. And so basically we start seeing everything that is yellow look white when in reality it's still yellow. For example, you can see that my son's red tricycle doesn't look so red. It just kind of looks a dark gray or dark orange color. But if I turn on the lights, then you can see that deep red color coming. But now if I take this yellow LED light, which is actually just a combination of green and red lights, now let's see what the spectrum looks like. Okay, three, two, one. So now you can see that we can actually see the full spectrum here, all except for the blues. So we can see all of the greens, the yellow, and the red, because we have both red and green light, which is everything we need to make yellow light, then red light, and the green light. And then sure enough, if we look at my son's red tricycle, it now looks red because there is red light in this yellow light. So this light doesn't quite match my low pressure sodium vapor lamp color. So would I get the same results now if I actually took a picture of my sodium vapor lamp, like I did here, and then shine my phone as the light source? Then what would the tricycle and this spectrum look like? Well, let's check it out. Okay, turn off my light. Turn this up. Now I'm just using my phone as the light source and you can see it still can illuminate the red and the green. So that means my phone somehow converted that pure yellow light into this red and green yellow light. And you can see the tricycle is a red tricycle still. So what does this all mean? Well, what it means is that the entire time that you've been watching this video, you never actually saw a pure yellow light. All you saw was red and green light because the pixels on your screen only can produce red, green, and blue light. So on any screen that you're watching, you basically only have three specific wavelengths that are triggering these cones. But based on the opponent process in your brain, the amount that those cones are triggered based on the luminosity of those RGB lights on your screen can output these different colors that your brain perceives as the entire visible spectrum. When in reality, if you were to measure those wavelengths of light coming off of your screen, you'd only see three of them. So the question is, does this even matter? Is there truly a difference physiologically between seeing yellow light and red and green light? Because yellow light would trigger our red cone about right here at its peak and our green cone somewhere in the middle of its peak luminosity. Well, a true monochromatic yellow light would trigger our red cone somewhere at its peak and our green cone somewhere at the mid response range. So the output ends up being the same, but the input is different. So the question is, does that matter? If you get the same output, does it matter that the input's different? And can you even tell if the input's different? For example, do you get a richer fulfillment of color seeing true color in these monochromatic sources than actually watching on a screen? So if you want to be able to tell whether a light source is a true monochromatic light source or a combination of different colors of light, then you can shine it on things that have different colors of reflection and see what colors get reflected back. But you can also just shine them on a prism and see how it splits up the light. For example, let's see how the prism splits up this yellow LED light. So you can see that through my prism here, I can get red and green light. But if I turn my sodium vapor lamp on, then try to split that light up. I just get this one peak of yellow there. So there's absolutely no red or green in it, just pure yellow. And I'd like to thank Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Brilliant's daily challenges helps make learning a daily habit. Every day they publish several challenges that provide a quick and exciting view into math, logic, science, engineering, and computer science. Each of these daily challenges provides you with the context and framework that you need to tackle it so that you learn the concepts by applying them. And then if you like the challenge and want to learn more, there's a course quiz associated with each challenge that explores the same concepts in greater detail. 
If you like my channel and like the stuff you learned on it, then head over to Brilliant to sign up for free. But if you'd like to sign up for their premium subscription, then click the link in my description for 20% off of their premium subscription. And thanks again for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, remember to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell so you can be notified of my latest videos out. And check out theactionlab.com to get the Action Lab subscription box. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.